So I just got out of the neuro ICU and I found that goals of care conversations there were a lot easier than any other location. And I'm trying to figure out how I can apply that to different settings that I'm going to be working at. Because I'm not a huge ICU guy. I'm not going to do critical care fellowship. But inherently within emergency medicine, you see a lot of those patients as they come into the door. And having palliative care conversations is becoming increasingly popular in the emergency department, which makes sense because we're doing a lot of interventions that a patient might not want, right? They come in through the door, they might not want to be intubated on pressors, chest tubes, all these very invasive things. And we have an opportunity as frontline people to not subject the patient or their loved, um, their loved ones to those things. And I found that in the neuro ICU, people have catastrophic strokes or brain hemorrhages. And that's usually a concept that people understand, right? Given the distribution of the stroke, um, your loved one is not going to be able to move a certain side or sense things, produce speech, understand speech, walk again, verbalize, things like that. That's usually a thing that people understand, like, oh, he could move his left side, and now he can't, and that might not come back, and he wouldn't want to live that way. People tend to have a much harder understanding of your loved one has ARDS. Like, what does that even mean? Or sepsis, it's such a vague concept. And I think the lesson there that I'm going to take away is it is so critically important to put things in a verbiage that people understand, um, assuming no comprehension of medicine or training. And it comes back to not what is their decision as a family member, it is what is their loved one's decision, and they are voicing their loved one's decision based on their behalf, right? And the example that I give is, I have some people who would say, if I can open my eyes and I can look outside, and I can see the change of the color of the leaves, that is enough for me. If I can talk, walk, communicate, but if I can look outside, or if I have one sense out of my five senses that works, that's enough. On the other hand, I've met people that have said out loud, you know, if I can't feed myself or wet my own behind, uh, that's it. Like, full comfort, don't pass go, and that's fine. It doesn't matter to me either way. It just matters to me that I understand what the patient's wishes are, right? So I don't quite know what the parallel is between neuro ICU and medical ICU type patients, but it was a good reminder to me that the only priority I should really have is making absolutely sure that the family understands what I'm saying and that the family understands that it's not their decision to make, it's them being the people who know the patient best. What would the patient's decision be? Because it's not really their decision.